take out your wallets. Yes, you heard correctly. I promise this is not a stick up. Please take out your wallets. Now, Chris Merrington, are you? Chris, now I heard that a couple of months back. Was it Shaz? Shaz. Uh, yes, he burned up a 10 pounder, is that correct? I promise fire will not be involved today. Your money will not be burned. I would like you to take out your wallets. And for those of you who have cash with you, I want you to pull that cash out of your wallets. I know that cash is very retro. Everybody has plastic. But if you do have cash with you, please pull that out. If you don't have cash, do not worry. You can still participate in a different way. We have euros. Is that good? Euros, pounds, American money, konos, whatever you have, that's fine. Now, for those of you with more than one note, what I'd like you to do is attempt to make a fan. So make a fan with your money. If you only have one note, just hold it there proudly. Be proud of that one note. All righty? Very good. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do is, for those of you who do not have cash, I want you to sit still. For those of you with cash, I would like you to stand up. Just right in front of your chairs, just stand up. Okay. You're going to bend your knees just slightly. So you don't want to go all the way 90 degrees. That's too much exercise for right now. You want to bend your knees just slightly. You want to have your fans of money right here, okay? And when I count to three, you're going to throw the cash up into the air, okay? One. Oh. For those of you who can't see, Guy is sitting up here. Guy or Guy, um, wh whichever you choose. Do both. Do both. <laughs> yes. Guy has just gone to the ATM and he's filthy rich with pounds. That's fantastic. Yes. yes. Now what I'd like to point out is all of you have been absolutely welcoming today. Not just the welcome committee, but everybody here has been very delightful. Everybody's been very polite. But the minute I asked you to throw the money into the air, those looks changed. I had people look away from me. I had one person roll her eyes. I had another one just sit down and say, mm -mm, I'm not doing this. What I'd like to point out to you is when it comes to time, we just throw it away. We do not make good decisions about how we use our time. However, when it comes to money, even those of you with one note in your hand, a five pounder even, uh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, you defended that. And that's the same way you need to protect your time. You must think about your time the same way that you did the span of money. And for those of you without cash, I'm sorry, but that's the end of the activity. You do not get to pick up anybody else's money. So thank you for being good sports. Please go ahead and have a seat. <laughs> 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 He gets to keep his money, so congratulations. Now, as a society, we understand how important money is. It is a priority to make sure that we have enough. And this is the same way you need to think about time. You create clarity by knowing what your priorities are, what your targets are, and practicing that self-care. Now, with Nancy, we also needed to make sure that we implement structure and flow. That's the I in CIA. How many of you have ever seen the TV show Monk with Tony Shalhoub? I know it's been translated in French, yeah. but I haven't seen it on the BBC in England. Very good, Very good. okay, Very good. Uh, yes. So for those of you who are not familiar with this detective Monk, he was diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder. OCD. It means he's very structured and everything needs to be just right, otherwise he goes into a conniption. Now we do need to have structure in our day, but we cannot have so much that one little change will throw us completely out of whack. On the other hand, we cannot be like my surfer friends in Los Angeles who just wake up and say, yeah, man, I'm not sure what I'll do today. I might catch some waves, dude. And they have absolutely no ambition or drive and have no idea of what they want to accomplish. We need to have that balance in the middle, that structure and that flow. Much like martial arts legend Bruce Lee describes. Now, I'm sure most of you in here are familiar with Bruce Lee. 
And you might even be familiar with his philosophy about martial arts. He said that you need to be water. Be formless and shapeless like water. If you pour water into a cup, it becomes the cup. If you pour water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. Into a teacup, it becomes the teacup. Water can drip, creep, flow, or crash. Be water. That's the same thing that we need to do with our time. We need to understand that time comes in a form, but we can change that form whenever it's necessary. The average person loses up to three hours per day from procrastination, distractions, and overwhelm. Oh my, three hours a day. And it doesn't happen all at once. It's not like you're going to say, well, from one o'clock to four o'clock yesterday, I just decided to procrastinate, get distracted, and be overwhelmed. Oh, there goes my three hours. No, it happens in time leaks. We lose 10 minutes over here, five minutes over there, 20 minutes that way. And when you add it up throughout the day, that's where so much of that time goes. Now, the wonderful thing to note about that statistic is that all of those are self-imposed. Procrastination, distractions, and overwhelm. And if they're self-imposed, that means we can unimpose them. And you do that through creating clarity, understanding what your focus is, what you're living for and what you're working for, and then also implementing structure and flow. When you get home today, what you want to do is take a look at what you have in your diary or on your calendar for tomorrow. You probably have a few things scheduled already. But then you want to choose the top three tasks that you need to get done tomorrow and schedule them as early in the day as possible in between what you already have on that calendar or in that diary. And then you want to choose a plus three. So let's say that all of the stars align, everything goes right, and you're able to get everything done early. Celebrate and then go into the plus three. That means you move ahead Get ahead of the curve so you'll be even less stressed the day after that. Or what if the opposite happens? What if your day is absolutely horrible? Nothing goes right, which is quite typical if you deal with humans or technology or both. Things go wrong. So if things do go wrong, this is when overwhelm tends to take over because we throw a tantrum, we're so busy complaining we can't get back on track, we have so many other things that we need to do that we don't even know what to do next. And that's where your plus three comes in. So give yourself a little time for this tantrum, not all day, but maybe a couple of minutes. Then you move into your bonus three. So you're still getting things done, just not necessarily in the order that you had initially planned. Now with procrastination, psychologists define that as the act of wanting to feel better now. It's the adult versions of a three-year-old's, I don't want a tantrum. That is procrastination. We choose to not do the task in front of us. We choose to not make the decision in front of us. And the common crutch that we use when we want to procrastinate is we grab that little digital device, that phone, and go into social media. And, oh, I'm going to check in on Foursquare. I'm going to see my friend's status update on Facebook. I am going to tweet about nothing or see what other people are tweeting about nothing. Those little devices get in our way of being productive. They are fantastic technological tools, but the key word is tool. We need to use them as tools. They should not control us. So if you tend to procrastinate by bringing out that phone, move your temptation apps to a back screen. Don't have them on the front screen where it's so easy to dive into. And in that time that it takes to swipe your screen to get back to those procrastination apps, you can catch yourself in the ask, act and ask yourself, will delaying this task or delaying this decision benefit me? You give yourself the chance to ask yourself that question when you are delaying getting to that app. Now, with overwhelm, overwhelm tends to set in. We have so much going on that we can't control, and that's where your three plus three comes in because you have that focus of what you need to get done. So that way, when things don't go right, it's okay. You can move time blocks around. 
How many of you have a to-do list with 20, 50, 75 things on there? We, yes, thank you. We set ourselves up for failure by creating these lists for the next day that are not humanly possible to finish. Why do that to ourselves? We have enough of a challenge as it is just to make it through the day. So that's where those time blocks come in and that's why you want to schedule your tasks onto the calendar. Scheduling those top three and then your bonus three. And if things don't go as planned, it's okay. You just move those time blocks around, just like a Rubik's Cube from back in the 80s. You make everything morph, okay? Now, being that it's International Day, I have a story that I'd like to share. I was a little hesitant at first because of my new French friends, but I think that you would appreciate a story about, let's say, diplomatic relations between Americans and the French and how sometimes Americans don't tend to understand everything that's going on. My husband and I had planned this bucket list trip. This was several years back. We'd seen several friends pass away right after they retired and we decided we can't wait until retirement to work on our bucket list. We need to do this now. So we planned a trip to France. We would spend Christmas and New Year's in Paris and then do a little traveling outside of Paris in between. We were a little hesitant though because in doing our research, it suddenly dawned on us that we don't know French. How are we going to get along over there if we can't even speak French? And then we had also heard that the French can sometimes be rude to Americans. I don't know, is that true? Well, according to a lot of other people, it is. Now, a few weeks before we were leaving, fortunately, we met this delightful Frenchman. We talked for a little while, about 30 minutes into the conversation, I felt comfortable enough to ask him, do you think you could help us with the little issue we have? We understand that the French can sometimes be a little rude to Americans. Can you please give us survival tips so that way we don't offend anybody and we don't get thrown in jail? And he said, oh, of course. First, excuse my accent, so sorry, <laughs> pardon moi. First, never start the conversation in English. Always start in French. Okay, that makes sense, that's a good tip. Second, always be formal. Say, madame for miss and monsieur for sir. Okay, that, that's a good one. Third, always be polite. Say, s'il vous plaît for please and merci for thank you. That's a great tip. Tip number four, this is the most important one. Please be aware of the French can-do attitude, which looks like this. <laughs> okay, well, we'll be on the lookout for that. So we wind up in this small town called Chartres, and in the area where we're staying, there's absolutely no nightlife there. So we figured, oh, this is the best place to do laundry. And then we'll get to head back to Paris with a suitcase full of clean clothes. Genius. Unfortunately, our hotel clerk was not very good at drawing maps. And when we got to the spot where she said there's a laundromat, there wasn't one. So my husband and I walked all over the place looking for a laundromat and finally found one. We were tired, we were hot, we were sweaty, but we couldn't take off our winter clothes because being geniuses, we had decided to wash all of our clothes. <laughs> so we walk into the laundromat and we were horrified to see that all of the instructions were in French. There was not a single word of English in there. I had no idea of how to even buy soap. I saw a lady with a mop and I went over to her and in my best French I said, pardon-moi, madame, hamon, s'il vous plaît. She stopped mopping, she looked at me and replied, my husband and I, using our limited Spanish skills, were able to figure out the instructions and we eventually got the soap and we started up the washing machines. And as we settled in for a nice, relaxing evening, I pulled out my travel guide and started flipping through all the phrases in the book. And that's when I realized that I had asked the woman with the mop for ham in Spanish. Stupid American. No wonder why she had that reaction. So we continued our lovely evening there, my husband's filling out postcards as we watched the residents from the flats above, the apartments above, come down, get their laundry out of the washing machine and take them up to line dry. After a while, there were only two machines running. 
ours in the dryer. We had about 10 minutes left, and then one washing machine off to the side. When suddenly, <laughs> that washing machine explodes open, water comes out, clothes come out. Oh my goodness, the place is going to flood. So I ran over and I'm throwing the clothes back into the washing machine. My husband goes for the mop. Oh, 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 oh. When out of this pile of clothes, I picked up the most beautiful lace bra I had ever seen. And it was obviously owned by somebody far more voluptuous than I. And as I held it up into the light to admire this work of art, I hear my husband yell, clothes, clothes, it's flooding. So I finish throwing everything back into the washer, slam the door, and the place is covered with water. <coughs> my husband comes sloshing over and he says, the closet's locked. I can't get to the mop. We look around the room for security cameras. There's not a single one. That means the two stupid Americans are going to get blamed for this mess. So my husband runs over to the dryer. He scoops everything out and puts it into a bag. I run and I get our Coast Guard, our postcards and I, I get the travel book and we go outside and we realize we don't know where we are. We were lost when we got here. We had no idea which way to turn. So we go to the only business on the street that is still open, and it's a cafe. And thank goodness, the waiter spoke English. We walk in, he says, welcome, please, hang the coats by the door. <gasps> no merci. <laughs> we sat at the table, he said, what would you like to order? And to us, comfort food is cheese and wine. So, in, once again, my best French, I said, s'il vous plaît, monsieur, fromage and vin rouge. S'il vous plaît. Oh, madame, fromage is for dessert. First, you must have your starter, then you must have your entree, and then you may have dessert, fromage. My husband and I looked at each other. We looked at the waiter and we replied, <laughs> <laughs> and I repeated, fromage and von rouge, s'il vous plaît. And my husband and I, when that wine came, we toasted to teamwork because the two of us got out of there together. You see, no matter how physically strong you are and how intelligent you are, you will be much more productive and much more efficient when you practice the A in CIA, which is assemble your team. You want to make sure that you have both a personal team and you have a work team. Your personal team begins with everybody who's in your household. You're a supportive team together. You share each other's priorities and targets and you help each other with self-care. You talk about implementing your structure and flow so everybody <coughs> understands what needs to happen. Now I'm very fortunate that a member of my personal team is in the room today. My then fiance, who became my husband, Joseph. He is my vice president of NBS. That's my VP of not being stupid. Because sometimes we can make very rash decisions when we can't bounce those ideas off somebody. So it's very important that you have that personal connection in your life. For my client, Nancy, who I've mentioned a few times throughout, she didn't have anybody in her household. So we recruited one of her best friends to be on her personal team, and then her adult kids were a part of her personal team, and they touch base each week. You also want to make sure that you have your work team. Now, as business owners, solopreneurs, you may not have employees. You can have a contractor, if you'd like, or you can talk to other colleagues that you have, whether they're in the speaking field or not. You can have accountability partners from different industries and from different parts of the world, and you get together once a week, once a month, whatever suits your schedule, and you keep each other accountable. It's so important to have that team, because with that team, you will be more productive and you will be more efficient.